Hello and welcome. This is going to be lecture number seven. We're going to be talking all about ions and isotopes. Go ahead, get on your notes, put today's date at the top, and let's get started. So we're going to use a very simple diagram of an atom to be able to understand what an isotope and what an ion is. Go ahead and recreate this in your notes. In the middle of your drawing, draw some circles with a little plus symbol on them and then some just blank circles. That plus represents a positive charge. Uh, those little circles are subatomic particles called protons, and they have a positive charge. Now the blank ones, where you draw a zero in there, those are neutrons, they have no charge. And then spinning around the outside of the nucleus, which is the region uh, containing the protons and the neutrons, it's very dense in the center of the atom, but spinning around the outside of that are the electrons, which have a negative charge. Now, protons are much more massive than electrons, but they both carry the same amount of charge, just in opposite directions. So one proton plus one electron equals no charge. They cancel each other out. So that's really important when determining the charge of an ion is to recognize that these cancel each other out. Let's look at this diagram. Uh, this has four protons. That means that this must be a beryllium atom. The protons determine what type of element we have. So let's say that this determines the element. They are the hardest thing to change about an atom. Electrons come and go, but protons tend to stay the exact same and determine almost everything about the properties of that element. The neutrons are very important. They help pack those protons together. With what we know about magnets, we know that if these all have positive charges, they should fly apart and repel one another, but the neutrons help pack and glue everything together. Now we can use a special type of notation called isotope notation to denote a single atom, which might have different properties. So the really big part of the isotope notation is where we write the chemical symbol for the element. And then we'll put two numbers next to it. We'll call this lower number Z. It's the atomic number, and that's specifically the number of proteins. These are linked. It is impossible for the chemical element to be something like an O for oxygen and not to have eight protons because eight protons always creates an oxygen atom. So this is a little bit redundant, but it's useful to help you find it quickly in the periodic table if you include the atomic number. Now the mass number A is the number of protons plus the neutrons. Together we call these the nucleons and this uh, these two particles are the ones that have any sort of appreciable mass. The electron is so much lighter compared to a proton and a neutron that really these two protons and neutrons really determine the atomic mass. So here I have a few atoms written out in isotope notation. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on with each of these and how many protons and neutrons they each have. So protons and neutrons. So for this first atom, this is clearly a sulfur atom because of the S, but also the 16 means it's definitely sulfur. Now to figure out the neutrons, we have to recognize that this 39 is a combination of both protons and neutrons. So you subtract away that 16 and you get that there's 23 remaining nucleons, which must all be neutrons. 
Together, those still add up to be 39. Now, how many protons are in this iron atom? Well, if it's iron, it has to be 26. We can just look right there. If we don't see a number right there, we can look at the periodic table, find iron. It is the 26th element. Now, what do we have to add in to get back up to 58? We'll simply do 58 minus 26, and you'll get 32. Together, those add up to be 58. You'll notice that these tend to come in pretty similar ratios. Often neutrons do outnumber the protons, but they tend to be pretty balanced. Now we've got uh, calcium 44. Well, it's calcium, so it has 20 protons, but to get up to 44 nucleons, you must add in 24 neutrons. Now, it is possible to have the same um, atom with different numbers of neutrons. This, uh, these we would call isotopes of one another. Isotopes. So an isotope is an atom with a specific number of neutrons. Here we see carbon-12 has six neutrons to bring its total number of nucleons up to 12. Well, carbon-13 has seven neutrons. So this is totally possible. Now, carbon-12 is slightly more stable than carbon-13. Carbon-13 will eventually decay into carbon-12, but they both do exist. Um, carbon-12 is much more common, but carbon-13 exists in nature as well. Now, what are we gonna do if we see a little positive or negative number after our isotope notation. Well, that number is the charge of this atom. And that tells us that the protons and the electrons are not being perfectly balanced. So here we see uh, helium four, which has an atomic number of two, but the charge is a plus two. So let's try to create a table for this. How many protons? neutrons and electrons does this helium atom have? Well, the number of protons is fixed because if it's helium, it must be a two and we can see the two there. The neutrons have to add up to be four, so we'll have two neutrons as well. But electrons count as a negative charge and protons count as a positive charge. This has a net positive two charge so it must have zero electrons uh, because these two positive charges aren't, be, aren't being canceled out by anything. Let's try this again with this magnesium atom right here. Magnesium has got 12 protons always. To bring us up to 24 nucleons, we gotta include 12 neutrons. And then how many electrons? This one again has a plus two charge, meaning there must be 10 electrons so the protons are still outweighing the electrons uh, by two. So 12 minus 10 gives us that two. This charge number here, we can always get it by doing protons minus the electrons. So how many protons, neutrons, and electrons does this atom have? We've got chlorine 36, so protons 17, that's what's making it a chlorine atom. Neutrons, well, then it's to add up to be 36, so I'm thinking 19. And then electrons, this ion has a negative charge. So the electrons are outweighing the protons by one. So it's gonna have 18, all right? It outweighs the electrons by one. Outweighs the protons by one. All right, let's try again with this one. How many protons in this beryllium? It must be four. We see the four there. If we don't see it, we know it's four because it is beryllium. 
neutrons. Well, to bring our total up to nine, we need to have five. It's four plus five equals nine. You can always just subtract this from this. And then electrons. Well, here I can tell the protons are outweighing the electrons by two, so there must be two electrons. So that protons minus electrons gives us a positive two. Now there are special words for when we have a net positive or net negative charge. They're both ions, but a cation specifically has a positive charge. And an anion specifically has a negative charge. All right, that's that for this lecture video. I'll embed a few more questions here, but have a good rest of your day.